reader. Okay, and the first step will be to get the RSS code from the internet. So in order to do this, okay, first one needs to look at an RSS feed that you know you're interested in. Okay, so for example, I could be interested in, <coughs> excuse me, in um, the CNN top stories. To understand what what the RSS looks like, you can view the page source by right clicking there, and then you see the source of this web page. It's an XML document. There's a channel title, but let's look at where are the news stories. This is it's getting pretty dizzy, but here you can see one. Let's see here. Spain unveil new budget. Spain to unveil new budget. This is within title tags. Okay? And then there's a description for this, right? So if you scroll a little bit over to here, description, Spain, that says Spain. Spain Prime Minister is set to release details of the embattled country's 2013 budget. CNN Al Goodman reports. And that is the end of the description tag. So we're concerned about the title and description tags. Okay? Now, the problem with this is that there are many titles and description tags, but each news item is delimited by the item tags. You see that item tag there, close item tag here. So what we want to do is look at the source of this code separate all the item elements of this okay and then from those item elements these item elements extract whatever's within the title tags and whatever's within the description tag okay that is our goal that is what we're going to do um, it is easy to do this with an XML parser but for purposes of this lesson, I'm going to do this by using string operations so you get familiar with string operations as well. Why? Well, because we're going to read the page and that's going to be this is going to become a huge string that I will have to parse and look at substrings and extract uh, piece, bits and pieces of this. Okay? So remember, one item, title element, and description element. Okay? That's what we're going to look at. All right, so we open uh, Xcode, which conven is conveniently open uh, in a project that I've entitled RSS Reader. Uh, RSS Reader is my project, right here. The RSS Reader I just created a new project. This can be an iOS project, okay? As you can see, it has a storyboard here, although there's really uh, nothing on this storyboard at all. Uh, but the first stage of this will be just to get this whole thing in text mode okay we're not gonna mess up with with the uh, with the storyboard yet a good practice for for all projects is to have a class that controls for example my news feeds will be represented in an object so I'm gonna go ahead and create a news feed new file and it's going to be an objective C class it's gonna be called news feed okay now, in uh, Objective C, uh, yeah, we create this. Create this. So we have our class. Now, in our class, our, I, I can just go ahead and uh, find some of the, I can already see some of the methods that this uh, class should have. One of the methods, for example, or one of the properties, for example, okay, if I go to my .h file, my interfaces. One of the properties that it'll have a strong non-atomic will be, for example, the URL here. The URL of this feed. I'm going to call it feed URL. Another property that this can have is first I need to think how am I going to store these new stories? Because there are many a good structure to store them is going to be uh, an NS array of new stories. Okay, so I'm going to create that property. And then the the other thing that I'm going to have is 
I'm going to create a method to actually retrieve the stories from the internet and this method will retrieve the stories from the internet and will put them in that NS array. So I declare that method retrieve from internet. Okay. This is what my class would look like or is looking like at the very beginning. Now I have to code this. So in order for me to retrieve stories from the internet, okay, I will need to create a URL request. So let's let's first let's um, I'm sorry, first let's synthesize the project, the properties. Synthesize feed URL equals feed URL synthesize um, new stories new ah oh, whoops new stories so we're synthesizing properties so I'm creating getters and setters for this and then I'm going to create my method retrieve from the internet Re retrieve from internet uh, why do I have to know there so first I need to create a uh, ns url request okay I'm gonna call it request that's going to be an ns url request okay I'm gonna call the method request with url and the url that I'm going to pass is the feed url self self dot feed URL. That's the URL that I'm going to pass. Okay. <coughs> there it is. So I'm creating, when I have a URL and I want to bring the contents of that, I need to create a request, which is a bunch of parameters around that URL. And then I need to retrieve the data in an NS data object using an NS URL connection. So NS URL connection the method to call a send synchronous request returning response error so send synchronous request I need the request I define it above request returning response returning response I'm gonna say nil and the error is also going to be nil it's gonna go there close this brace so now I have the data of this URL oh and this is request Okay, now I need to create the, I've gotten the HTML code in some sort of binary code. Now I need to make it into a string. So in a string, uh, HTML or page source, for example, page source is going to be an, a new and a string object. Uh, I'm going to allocate it and then I'm going to initialize with data. Which data is going to be the one that's going to be converted into a string? The data that I received above. And the encoding here will be NSUTF8 string encoding. Okay. Now I have a string with a page source. Just for the sake of it, I'm, I'm going to log this. Page source. So I'm logging this. So I've gotten the URL code, but what I want to do here is put all the stories in that in the new stories array up here. So I'm going to do that, and I'm going to say self set new stories stories. Okay, and then the I'm going to set the array to something. I have to do a lot of text processing. So I'm just going to create a function that will do all the text processing for me and will put it into an array format. And that function, I'm going to call it uh, get, uh, get headers and snippets from source. And I will pass it the page source. So I will, I will, I will do it in a way that is actually um, that actually receives a string, which is this page source here, and returns an NS array. So that's the method I'm going to call. Okay. Now, this method doesn't exist. I need to create it. Now, this method does not need to be public. It actually can perfectly be private. To create private methods, remember where I am, I'm in, I'm in my .m file. To create private methods before the implementation on the, on the .m file, I will say interface 
and then the class, and use feed, open close parentheses, and then, I'm sorry, uh, open and close parentheses, and then right after here, I'm going to say, and so I'm creating an interface, but it's private. So I'm going to create the headers for this new method that I'm going to uh, that I'm going to uh, use, right? And the header for that new method, remember, it returns an NS array, and it uh, and it receives a string, which is the HTML source. So this is how I'm going to declare it. Okay. Now, I have the task. What is this error? Expected identifier. Sure. Um, so now this w uh, for this method, I'm going to implement this method, right? To implement the get uh, headers and uh, snippets from source, I will do the following. Let me just implement it here. I will say NS array get headers and snippets from source, HTML source. First, I'm going to create a temporary array with feed items. And this is something really interesting. The source, which is a string, I will separate them on each item element. So what this does is it's a, this is like the split, like the split method on strings. You can Google what that does. But basically it splits the string on that delimiter and the item. So it'll look for a long string and whenever it says item, it will divide that string. It will divide it in as many elements as items are there and it will create an array of those elements. Okay, so now I have each feed items. These are the item elements in the XML. These are basically, if we go back to the XML code, this will be strings containing more or less this. One of these, the other string is going to contain one of these. Okay, so that's what the um, that's what this does. And then I'm going to have an NS mutable array where I'm going to put the titles and snippets. Okay. That's what I'm going to do. So the next thing that I want to do is go through each item and put the titles and snippets in there. So for that, I need a for loop for and a string uh, item in feed items. What I am going to do here is I'm going to somehow put, um, put title and description in the array of um, in the array of news in the array of uh, titles and snippets and snippets what I want here is to have some kind of object that can store a title and a description for one item and then that object I will pack it and I will put it as one element of the array titles and snippets okay so I need an, an object that allows me to store both a title and a description in this case. An object that allows me to store both a title and a description. Then, then I will put that object as an element in the titles and snip pets array. Okay? That's how this is going to roll. That object is an NS dictionary. Dictionaries allow you to specify a key, for example, title, and associate another object to it, for example, the string of the title, and then specify another key, description, and associate the whole string that actually defines the description. So let's do this. Let's create an NS mutable dictionary. NS mutable dictionary. That's going to be the news item, and that is going to be an NS mutable dictionary alloc in it. Create NS mutable, and then we'll, we're going to say news item set object, okay? And the object that we're going to say is the just say the title, right? So we're going to somehow extract the title from that from that string, and I will do that in a separate function, okay? So the way I'm going to do this is in a separate function. So I'm going to call that function, um, what should we call that function? Get title from item, 
that's going to be a function that basically looks for the string title and gets the substring, which is the looks for the tag title and gets the substring inside it, given an item. Remember, an item is each string that contains that that's in the feed items. Given an item, we're going to get the title. This is what this function will do. And the key that's going to go in the dictionary there is going to be add a title. Now, in the same way, I'm also going to get the uh, the description here. Okay. So for key description. Okay. And then once I have this mutable dictionary with both things stored in it, I'm going to say titles and snippets add object news item. Okay. So in this way, I'm going to be looping through this and adding this news item. Now, get title from item and get description from item need to be private methods. So I'm going to add them to my uh, private interface. Okay, so let's add them to my private interface here. That's where my methods are. Okay. Um, Having done that, I will just want to see what happens here. I have a written error here, and I think it's because I have one too many parentheses. Okay. All right. So this is what we're going to do. Now, I'm going to implement this method. So let me implement the first method, get title from item. So I'm going to... Um, basically write it here. Uh, whoops, I have an error here. Oh, I need to close the, the braces there. Get title from item. This is going to be my function there. And what I will do with this is this. First, when I need a substring, okay, what I need to find out is where does the tag title begins and where does it end. So basically what I need to find is, now I have an item that looks like this, I need to find the position of this title thing and I actually need to find this position, the position of the first S. Then I will need to find the position of this title tag and determine what this position is. And then I will get a substring from Spain all the way to bailout question mark, okay, in this case from everything that's within the title tags. So to do that, I need to find first the first, uh, the, 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 um, I get an item here, remember? Item, an item is just that string. Item, I'm going to say, try to find, try to find the string title, like that, right, the tag title. The function to find that is called range of string, and that function returns, that method returns a NS, an NS range. An NS range is a structure, so therefore it doesn't need a, a star a star next to it. Title open. So this will be the title open tag. It's going to be the range that range of string. And then NS range title close, just to find the other one, will be um, item range of string, and then yeah, you guessed it the closing tag on title. And uh, why am I not writing there? Wait. Add title. Okay. Now the NS range contains the position, for example, title open will contain two, the NS range is a structure that contains two variables. One is the location, which is the location where this element occurs. And the other one is the length, which is the length of this element, okay? So the position of of the next over will be location plus length, and that should give me the position of the element right after title, okay? So I'll create another NS range, whoops, another NS range, um, title contents, okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to first 
get where the title starts. So title contents dot location, that's one of the objects, will be, you can Google the NS range uh, specification, but title range dot location will be where the title open location plus the title open length. There is no like endpoint in the in a range. There's only location and length, so that's why I worked like this. So title const location will be title open dot location plus title open dot length. Now, I, title contents needs a length, and how long is it going to be? Well, it's going to be the location of title close, so where this happens, minus the location of title open right, which is where, where the first string of the title actually happens, where the first letter of the title happens. So it'll be title close dot location minus title, uh, title contents dot location. Now I have the range in which the title actually happens. So what I need to uh, return now is item substring with range title oops contents so I have defined the range that I'm interested in and then I just substring it from the item that's how I'm gonna get the title for this thing the way I'm gonna get the description is extremely similar so the way I'm gonna get the description for this is going to be like this, same thing, arrange for the open, arrange for the close, description range, that's the actual description. I define the range, I return the range. Now, not all news items have a description. In the case that it doesn't find a description, the case this doesn't find a description, the location becomes an NS not found. If that is the case, I'll just return no description available. Okay? And I think we're ready to, to test this. So we have the newsfeed.h, we have the newsfeed.m. We're going to go to my RSS view controller.h, and I'm going to import this class. Import uh, newsfeed.h. And then in my view controller, there's a method called view did load. This, you, can, you can put this anywhere you think you can execute this. View did load happens right before the screen of the iPad in this case is shown. So I might as well just put it here. It's just as good a place as, as many others. So what I will say here is I'm going to create a newsfeed object. Newsfeed object, which is going to be called NF. And that's going to be newsfeed alloc in it. So I'm creating a new feed new uh, newsfeed object. Now, why is this not, um, oh, sorry, newsfeed and f equals newsfeed alloc in it, and that is newsfeed alloc in it. I think this is correct, yes. Um, and I still have an error here. What is the error? Semicolon, oh, okay. Alloc, I have one too many parentheses. Okay, there it is. There's a newsfeed object. Now, uh, this newsfeed, I'm going to invoke the um, the method to retrieve contents from the internet. So, retrieve from internet with no parameters. <coughs> and then, what this method? Oh, uh, um, sorry. This is not how we call things in iOS. There you go, NS retrieved from internet. And then now I know that the NS, that the NF array, uh, news, news stories, the property NS, the property of the news feeds dot news stories contains an array of dictionaries. So I'm going to look through them. So for uh, ID for any object, you know, whatever object this is, ID um, news item in an NF and the array is called uh, news stories, right? Remember, I built the systems that, I built the, the, the functions that actually put this in my news stories array. So for all the items, all the objects in this array, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do an NS 
dictionary D is going to be the NS dictionary star news item. So I'm going to cast the news item. I know it's an NS dictionary, so I'm going to cast it to an NS dictionary. And then what I can do is uh, NS NS log percentage title uh, title colon um, title colon and then uh, percent star and then a new line and then percent another at symbol I'm sorry not star and then I'm gonna put D get um, so in this dictionary will be D um, object for key title comma D object for key description close Before, before I run it, there's there are a couple of, of errors here. I should return an NS array from this, and I was not returning that. So, actually, I will return. And what's my NS array with the news stories? It's the titles and snippets. So, titles and snippets. The other last thing that I need before I can run this is actually this newsfeed, yeah, retrieves the, the internet and everything, but I haven't given it the URL, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say nf set feed URL and then an ns URL alloc and then in it, ah, I'm sorry, URL with string and then the string of the actual CNN newsfeed, which I will get from my Google RSS. So I'm going to put it here, right? NS URL, URL with string that, and then I have to close one more parenthesis, and that should do it. All right, and what happened is uh, why iPad board came up, but for now we're interesting. We're interested in what happens here. <coughs> Excuse me. You can see that the first thing that this thing did was to print all of the actual XML code of the page, which is an NS log that I put out there, some, some there, some place in there. Let's go all the way to the end of this. All the way to the end of this XML here, just about here. So the first title, CNN.com top stories, and the description is CNN delivers up to the minute news and blah, blah, blah. First title, Spain braces for protests more cuts loom. Spain is set to unveil the debt risen country's new budget, blah, blah, blah. Next title, here's the next, you know, Spain to unveil new budget, Spain's prime minister is set to release details of the embattled, blah, blah, blah. So now we're getting the RSS feeds from this web page, and you can see that these are the same titles, Spain braces for protests, Spain to unveil new budget, and so on and so forth. We have successfully done an RSS reader. Next time we're actually going to persist this in the device.